Good hello everyone and welcome to my spring wrap up. So, I think what I'll do is seasonal wrap up. So if you saw my blog post in March, I posted a spring TBR of books that I definitely wanted to get to this spring. And although I only got to two out of the five books on that list, I'm still really happy with the books that I did read this spring. So I thought I'd go ahead and share them with you. So starting in the month of March, I read 10 books. The first being Girl, Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis. I gave this a three out of five stars and I read it via audiobook. And I didn't think it was bad, but I didn't think it was good either. There were definitely some really great points. Um, it's kind of like a self-help book with a little bit of a Christian themes in it. And I didn't have any issues with the Christian themes. Um, I wasn't really expecting them. I guess that's kind of what happens when you go into a book without really knowing what's up. It's definitely geared towards an older audience, mostly parents and mothers, but I definitely did get some good insights from it. So although I didn't love it, I didn't hate it either. The next book that I read in March was King of Scars by Leigh Bardugo. This is the first in a duology, I believe, for Nikolai Lansloff, um, and it's part of the Grishaverse world which Lee Bardugo has artfully created. Um, I love Nikolai. I think his character is fantastic. I was kind of disappointed to not see more of him, but very, very excited for the second book, especially with the ending. I buddy read this with my friend Sarah over on Instagram. She's at Curious Soul, so I'll link her down below because she's a beautiful human who does beautiful art and I love her very much. And her and I were like screaming the entire time reading this. It was just, it was so good. I gave this a 4 to a 4.5 star rating. Um, but like I said, I was disappointed that there wasn't a lot of Nikolai in it. However, I did love Zoya, so that's okay. It's okay. It was good. The next thing I read was Saga Book 2. And if you know me, you know that I'm absolutely head over heels in love with the Saga series. It's a graphic novel and it's fantastic and emotional. It's just, it's not a surface level graphic novel. It was incredible. Five out of five stars, always would recommend. I literally talked about these volumes for the entire month of March. I, like I would not shut up about it. So definitely check them out, would recommend, absolutely love them. The next book that I read and listened to was Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare, which is book one in the Dark Artifices. If you know anything about the Shadowhunter world, you know that um, the Mortal Instruments isn't like the best of the best. And the Infernal Devices are definitely like a step up. But I really, really loved Lady Midnight. I loved following this new set of characters and I think Emma and Julian are literally the sweetest things in the entire world and I love them so much. And I have a couple of memorable moments in here but I definitely will give this a reread uh, for when I read Lord of Shadows because I love this so much and I'm so mad that I haven't read Lord of Shadows yet but it's fine. It's fine. Um, genuinely did love this so much. And is it safe to say that the Dark Artifices are looking like my favorite in the Shadowhunter world so far? Because I've only read book one and I know Queen of Air and Darkness so like absolutely ruins people, but whatever. I loved it. Um, five out of five stars. Yeah. Up next, I reread Fangirl by Rima Rowell and honestly, I don't remember why I reread it, but I do remember absolutely loving it the second time around. I did give this a four to five stars, so I definitely dropped my rating because there were some moments where I was like, okay, this could have been fleshed out better. It's definitely geared towards a younger audience, so I think my sister would really like this. But I still love this story. I know so many people, including myself, relate to Kath and who she is as a person. But also I found myself feeling a lot like Ren and it's really interesting because I'll be transferring colleges this year and I'll be moving in. So this is definitely something that just makes my heart feel nice and warm and fuzzy, but I still see some of the issues with it. So I think that's really good as a critical reader to understand um, 
the good aspects and the bad aspects about a book and just acknowledge them, you know? Up next, I read The Crucible by Arthur Miller, um, and I hardly remember a single thing about it, but I definitely tabbed it up in the way that I do for school. And you can see just all the lovely little tabs here. This is honestly one of my favorite things to do for school. Like, I love tabbing and writing up here. Um, and it's, oh, it's so satisfying to do it. I love this. But I genuinely don't remember I finally read Carry On by Rainbow Rowell, and so many people had been screaming at me to read this. Like, literally screaming at me on Instagram to read this. Um, I listened to it on audio, and I, like, followed along as I was reading it physically, and this was so much fun. Like, genuinely so much fun. I think Simon and Baz are two characters that I would love to follow and I'm so excited for Wayward Son to come out and I said this on Instagram and I'm going to say it again if you did not sing Carry On My Wayward Son the entire time then you did it wrong because literally Carry On the sequel is called Wayward Son next I read Saga Volume 3 and like I said about Volume 2 I loved it the end oh my God, the ending absolutely shattered my heart. God, it's so beautiful. And I am so happy to have read it. And finally, for the month of March, I read Between Before and After. And this was such a fun and surprising little mystery. I don't know why I pushed it back as far as I did because it genuinely was so good. I was so surprised. You follow this mother and her two children, Elaine and Steven, as they try to kind of uncover some of the mom's past and the dual timeline in it I thought was really cool. There were some really interesting moments of understanding the past and why certain things are left back then as well as how important having that family dynamic is. There was a lot of growth in character and that comes from having to accept the past and be able to move on with it and move forward and I think that it was really skillfully done. I gave this book a four out of five stars, and there were definitely some moments that were slow that I didn't really understand their relevance and their importance later on in life, but I really enjoyed it. I don't know if I would buy this book, so I'm really glad that I got the ebook. If you really like uncovering family pasts, I would definitely recommend this book. Moving on to the month of April, I participated in the Owls Readathon, and this was so much fun and I'm really really happy that I was able to participate this year. I didn't do as well as I would have liked to. I still ended up finishing 11 books in the month of May which like thank you yes. Okay the first book I'm going to talk about is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. <sighs> I love Taylor Jenkins Reid. I don't know how she does it. I genuinely don't. But she creates these characters that feel so real. Like, I'm speechless. I was so happy with this novel. Um, following Daisy Jones and this band called The Six, you see why they got together, why they broke up, how they broke up, and kind of figuring out, like, why they're so relevant now. It's so well done, and you feel like you get to know every single character. And like, you get to hate every single character, you get to love them, you understand their struggles, and you also like, feel it. And I think that's really powerful. I listened to it via Scribd, and it was the best decision. Definitely listen to it on audio if you're gonna read it for the first time. If you're gonna reread it, listen to it on audio. But I gave this book a 4.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was In an Absent Dream by Sean McGuire. And I gave this book a 3.5 four out of five stars. The Wayward Children series is one that I had always listened to on audio because it's super quick. It's only like a six hour audiobook and you can finish that in a day and I think I did end up finishing this in the day. And it's supposed to be like magical realism meets fantastical thing. I don't <sighs> Look, I don't know. I wasn't necessarily disappointed by this, but like these book these books, novellas, they're novellas. They make me so confused. If I couldn't keep up with what was going on, I don't know. It was just such a weird book. And they, they're all weird books. 
but they're good. I don't know. It was alright. Whatever, moving on. Next, I read The Titan's Curse by Rick Riordan. I also listened to this on audiobook. I was on a real audio kick in the month of April. And Rick Riordan's writing is always so good. It's so satisfying to see a sassy Percy and seeing exactly what he's going through as he's trying to navigate his way through the world and being a demigod. He's got a lot going on for him and Rick Riordan does a phenomenal job of writing both the youth that is in him but also developing him as a growing boy and I just I love it it's full of nostalgia so in the month of April I read the Caraval trilogy and I'm so happy Stephanie Garber has done such a phenomenal job with this series and I talk about it non-stop on Instagram I will continue to talk about it non-stop now because these books are just oh, they're so good they make me so happy I gave them all five out of five stars Book one is Caraval, and it's one of the most twisting games of my entire life that I've ever read. It is magical and whimsical and fun, and I just, I stay loving this. Book one follows Scarlet Dragna, and book two follows Donatella Dragna, and I love Tella's character, and I think. I might have to say that Legendary is my favorite of the two sisters' perspectives, just because Tella is just so wild, and she has so much going for her. Um, and honestly, she's a hot mess, so like, relatable. And then finally, finale. I was so lucky to get an arc of this. Um, so I read it, I read the arc. So I read the arc in April, and then I read the finished copy in May and again tabbed her up i love this world and and that's it i also love Jax. he has my heart forever and always and nothing can ever change that so up next i read holding on to nothing which is a poetry collection by one of my beautiful friends on instagram shannon and she continues to write poetry that like absolutely breaks my heart i think this is one of my favorites out of all of her poetry collections just because it really hones in on the healing as an individual and as someone who has been through pain and hurt but is still striving in the world today. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It's a super quick read um, and I definitely would recommend checking out some of Shannon's poetry. Next, I read The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon and oh my god. I am so freaking happy that I read it because it's literally so good. It was a little info dumpy at the beginning just because you really, you had to develop this world. It's so intense and there's so many systems that needed to be developed. And I think Samantha Shannon does a phenomenal job of that. I guess a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I love Paige. Oh my, Paige is easily one of my favorite female characters, like, ever. She has made it on that list. Um, Warden is this sweet little cinnamon roll that needs to be protected at all costs. He's trying to be so hard, but he's also so soft. I'm so in love. Oh, in love with the bone season and I can't wait to keep reading it because I know everybody says that it gets better it gets better and that makes me so excited next I finally read Red Queen by Victoria Aviary which is book one in the Red Queen series I gave this book a 4.5 out of 5 stars and holy crap I was so surprised by this book I love the political system in this and seeing how divided the world is yeah it's rough and it's difficult but seeing the way that mare does it and the way she plays a role in this world oh my gosh she was so cool it was so cool i was so so satisfied by this book there's also levels of betrayal there's levels of trust it's just i was surprised by this and i'm not gonna lie i'm really scared to keep reading it because people say it doesn't stay this good so i don't know um so i'm kind of like putting it off a little bit but I'm so happy to have read this. Next, I read Pride by Evie Savoy, and I did enjoy it. I gave the book a 4 out of 5 stars. I thought it was super funny, and I loved Zuri's character. I love how driven she was and how passionate she was about her town, and I love the audiobook. And Elizabeth Acevedo does a phenomenal job of being the narrator for it. So, And finally, I read Otherworld by Jason Siegel and Kristen Miller. Um, I listened to the audiobook, which was narrated by Jason Siegel, and let me tell you something. <laughs> It was so much fun to have one of my favorite actors read a book to me. The world of Otherworld was just, it blew my mind away. It was so unique and it really made you feel like 
every chance that you took in this book was something that was going to risk your life and something that was really going to change the entire atmosphere of the characters and the choices that they made and just it was so good. It was so good. I definitely am going to pick up the sequel, but I really did enjoy it. It was a cool book and I wasn't expecting to like it. And finally, for the month of May, I've so far read eight books. I think I'm going to be able to finish two more. But the first book that I read was Sky Without Stars and wow, was I surprised by this book. It's a little bit longer than I was expecting it to be. I'm not going to lie, but this was so, so good. Considering it's a Lame is Rob retelling in space. I wasn't sure how much I was gonna like it, but like it's it's good. The political system was there. The, you have those who are part of the revolution. You have those who are part of the military forces, and then you have those who are just kind of hidden away from the world that all had to be forced to interact. And seeing all of their previous mindsets and the way that they've been raised clash together, but in a way that was just done so beautifully. To address the fact that like yeah we come from different worlds but we still have something to prove there's still more to us than just what we're supposed to be i think that the ending was definitely something that threw me off just because i it was this intense build up to something so wild but we were left with the cliffhanger as set up for book two so when book two comes out i definitely will like 110 percent read it because like i gotta know i gotta know what happened to my characters i just i need to Next, I read The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne, which I gave a 3 out of 5 stars to. Um, I reread this for school. I wrote a paper on it. Next, I read Again But Better by Christine Riccio, and if you guys saw the reading vlog where I read it, it's an experience that I won't forget, which is something that, like, for a book that I didn't like, it's very memorable, you know? It's not like something you're just gonna forget and throw into the back of your mind, because it just wasn't up to par. I don't like it. Um, I gave it a two out of five stars. It's probably the lowest rating that I've given a book in a while. I just thought the characters weren't really fleshed out. I thought the drama wasn't really much, but the dual perspective timeline was pretty cool. Up next, I read The Perks of Being a Wallflower, and I gave it a four out of five stars. This is something that others will definitely value more than I do, just because it is definitely a coming of age story and I read it for a nostalgia perspective. It was good, it was sweet, but... I read Cruel Crown by Victoria Aveyard, which has the novella Steel Scar and Queen Song, and it follows the red and silver sides by two women who are very influential in this world. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it either. It was just definitely cool to see their perspectives. Uh, because I haven't read the next book in the Red Queen series, I don't know how necessary the knowledge in this is, but it was enjoyable. I loved seeing the background, so 4 out of 5 stars. Then I read The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chakshi, and I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars. And, I don't know, I just kind of stay disappointed by this book. I was hoping for so much more. I am unhauling this book this month, so, eh, whatever. And finally, Girls of Paper and Fire, which I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I struggled with my rating for this book because it's not that I didn't enjoy it, I was just kind of let down by the ending. I saw it coming. I don't know, it was one of those books where it had such a strong start, just not a strong ending. So, I don't know, I'm a little disappointed, but what can you do? So, these were all of the books that I finished and my spring book wrap up. However, if you'd like to see kind of like a miscellaneous wrap up for the month of spring, check out my blog below. There's going to be a post that goes up the same day that this video goes up, um, just talking about all the movies that I saw, the music that I listened to, and so much more. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Don't forget to leave a comment, like, and subscribe, and until then, I'll catch you on Instagram.